is Nancy Noble Chessmaster All Rats. I'm here finally going to, going to get this series I promised uh, close to two years ago completed. Uh, this was a team match that my video lessons group played against Team Lullaby Vista, and I certainly apologize for taking so long to get this done. I'll just give a brief explanation. Soon after this match started, I met the lady of my dreams and uh, had to spend a lot of time with her, and then, then I had a serious illness. And I'm just getting back into things. And uh, anyway, I'll just leave it at that. I claim victory for our team in this. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail. The other team did a lot of unscrupulous uh, activities. We'll just let the story tell itself as it is. But who cares who wins the match? Uh, um, you know, my objective in running uh, team matches, our, our team score is like 41%. I uh, meaning for every 100 matches we win 41, we lose 59. Now, I don't care about that. Uh, a lot of teams like to win matches, so that's fine. Uh, usually to win a match, you have to outrank the other team, have, have higher ratings. And that plays right up my alley. You don't get better beating up on slow, lower, lower players. You get better competing against higher players. That's just fact, okay? So uh, that's, I'm happy when, every time we're outmatched. Okay, so... CK1886 is our team member. This game was over quickly. I mean, you know, guys, slow down in your correspondence shots, okay? You have an average, you have three days per move. Look up the opening. I mean, you know, I see so many people, they don't play the opening right. They, they don't even understand you can look up the opening. They don't understand you can uh, follow a database and and uh, use use chess books, okay, to, to find the best continuation. They don't. Some people don't even understand you're free to set up a chessboard and move pieces around, okay? This is correspondence chess. I don't care what chess.com calls it, what they call it, daily chess, it's postal chess. Good old chess by mail without the post office. Okay, so, and, and they set these uh, protocols down years ahead of time uh, how to continue. So we got the Karakon advanced variation. It generally doesn't offer white much, but apparently it's going to because Black apparently is going to move too fast. He's getting checkmated here in 21 moves. Now we want to find out why. Now, the pawn going to h5 might have been a mistake. Uh, this pawn could become a target. Uh, pawn going to h6 might have been a little more prudent. Let's see what happens. And now uh, he's attacking it. So, Black decides to counterattack with his pawn chain. Uh, or, you know, the rule is, attack it with your pawns in the direction the pawn chain points. Then, in case c5 is the correct break, now he's trying to break up White's pawn chain. But before White bothers to pick up this pawn, he secures his pawn chain at its base d4. Why is D4 the base? Why isn't it B2? Very interesting question. The answer is, imagine the pawns being traded. When the pawns get traded, that creates the base if it, uh, at, at the point where they're traded. Okay? If this pawn were to go to C4, black later advanced D5 and captured on C3, and white took back with this pawn, hey, there's your new base. Um, C3. Okay? Pretty simple once you get the hang of it. But the pawn on h5 isn't going anywhere, so he just solidifies his pawn chain, black develops a little further, and he decides he doesn't want the pawn. Now maybe that's a book line, I don't know. It's your job to look it up. Okay? Uh, now here, this strategically is an error. You should be taking it back and maintaining uh, the pawn chain. Now the pawn on e5 could become a target. Okay, so he doesn't endeavor to uh, uh, target this pawn. It could have been targeted. How could he do that? Uh, queen c7. Okay, that's one idea. Uh, another idea, well, let's see. No way we want to get this knight to g6, but that's not possible in this position. Um, where else could it go? Well, it could go up, it might even go to g4. It might. Okay. Uh, we deploy it, get it to d7. It has a roundabout way to get there, but it can get there. Uh, knight here. Let's see. Knight here. My here and my here. Now, that takes a lot of moves. White has his chances too, but we do want to try to make plans and and then analyze and say, well, Black's taking those five moves on the other side. What can White do? Probably makes position stronger. But this is how you analyze, okay? So Queen A5. Uh, it pin. It, this pawn is defensively pinned now, but but uh, White can take back with the Queen. Okay, so White decides the castle, and now the pin on the pawn is broken. And now black removes white's bad bishop. That's probably strategic error. See, now white's bishop is a good bishop. It can maneuver uh, uh, around around these pawns, okay? It has, it has squares to go to, okay? 
to attack on B2 decides to let him have it. And, and I can see why he's letting let him do this because, you know, this black king has some castle good. If the queen takes the pawn, even though it creates a threat on white, there's going to be a check. And it looks like that would happen. That's what happens. And, you know, black's a pawn up, but his king is under fire here. And white calculates he can sacrifice uh, material here. So black picks up the exchange and takes the knight. Black's up a, a rook and a pawn. Okay, however, white has a first attack. Now, after this move, there's a threat of checkmate in one move. Okay, so on d7, queen d7 mate is a threat. Okay, so black brings his queen back to defend. And here comes another check. And you know, black is busted. Okay, because now black's going to have to give up his queen. And kaboom, there it goes. And now it's a discovered checkmate. So, you know, good game by White, took advantage of Black's mistakes and Black's greed. Okay, let's bring up the other game. Uh, they played two games. Okay, this one went down to a uh, end game. So we set it, load. Okay, now put the board, CK1886 on the bottom. Okay, so that before he plays the uh, From Gambit, Black one uh, Interesting choices for white. White can play e4 and, and be offering the king's gambit. But here black is gambiting a, a, a pawn out of the open for development, open lines. Black already has one piece developed, white has nothing. Uh, black can develop his queen's bishop. White can't develop either bishop. And for the moment, black has a threat. Uh, the threat is, is a mate in three. Queen h5 check, g3. Sacrifice the queen, pawn takes, and bishop takes mate. So, white needs to play knight up for me here. And he probably will. Yep, okay. So it's still theory. Now, this is not the normal move. I'm sure it's been played before. Uh, the line I'm familiar with is g5. Uh, white is trying to uh, chase that knight away and get that check. And I think the normal move is black plays uh, uh, g3, you know, white does kick the knight to h4, and black plays something like knight e7, and knight g6, there's an exchange made on g6, and black has a half open h file to work with. And anyway, that's basically what theory says. So bishop g4 creates a threat. Uh, let's see, anyway, uh, g3, that blocks the check. Now, now there's a threat of winning a piece because the e pawn is defensively pinned. Okay, and that's covered. Belt the piece. So, you know, black's getting some development in return for the pawn. Uh, D, D4 created some, some weaknesses here. It, it shut down this diagonal for what it's worth, but, you know, e3 and e4 can no longer be covered by pawns. Uh, you know, it's one of the risks that white's undergoing. Maybe try to play a little weakness free here. Maybe. Uh, maybe a move to consider would be the castle. You know, black could castle long and attempt the pawn storm. Okay. Uh, black might need some development. Uh, you know, you could consider d3 with the idea of d4. Uh, you know, giving him, you know, he'd still be weak on this diagonal, but try to get the bishop into e3 if, if you can. Could even consider a, a fianchetto here. It might gain a tempo on this pawn. Uh, but but white needs some development. And d4 does accomplish that. It does open up a diagonal for the bishop. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Now, black does castle long, as I was saying. You might consider a pawn storm. Is that going to happen? And then, of course, white may want to, you know, try to get some kind of pawn storm of his own going at some time. Uh, but here we have a tactic uh, that apparently white overlooked. Okay. Now, if, uh, if you capture the knight, Let's see. Oh, this could be this could be tricky. Obviously, to take with the queen, bishop c5 is going to pin and win the queen. But what happens if he takes with the knight? Uh, he doesn't. But what happens if he does? Can can uh, can White hold this? You know, he's up a piece. Let's see. Uh, one idea is return the piece, but that looks shaky. Let's look. Oh, well, he can't play e3. Okay, e3 fails for this. So it looks like a very sound sacrifice. So, 
uh, White didn't see this coming. Uh, and now he, he's, he's given back the, the, the pawn he won in the open. And now he, he also has a permanent weakness there to pawn on e2, and he's behind in development. So I Texas King and, oops, doesn't do that. Texas King in the corner, and doesn't do anything to protect uh, this pawn. So Black just says, I'm going to be up a second pawn. And let's see. Or not a second pawn, a first pawn. What if he pins? Does that sound? Um, let's see. White does, uh, Black does have some attacking chances here with discoveries. Let's see. Okay, White's threatening to take here or here. Uh, the bishop's lined up on the queen. But if the bishop takes this pawn, for instance, uh, the queen is no longer guarded, so queen takes. Now if we trade, you know, this might this might prove promising for uh, for black. Let's see, check. Now we have a fork. Okay, let's see. Uh, if rook e1, it's going to get snapped off by the bishop. If bishop f1, it's going to get snapped off. Let's see. I would think this is going to be good for, for black. Let's see. Now... How does this stack up? Black is ahead uh, two pawns. Uh, let's see. Could play bishop takes check. And after king takes rook, bishop takes check. Followed by bishop takes pawn. That should suffice. So, you know, white's, white's in a lot of trouble here. Okay. So, he doesn't do the pin. He develops his knight. But he's shutting his bishop for what it's worth. But he's also closing down this file from the discoveries. And he does it anyway. Okay, now his idea, I guess, is it takes. You're going to take this with check. You're giving up two pieces for a rook and two pawns. And the white king is very, very exposed. You're going to have to start the pawn storm. And apparently this is what's going to happen. And he does take the rook. Now, now to some degree, white could be okay here. Uh, why do I say that? Well, he's got two pieces for the rook. Uh, objectively, anytime you get two pieces for the rook, if you give up, uh, I mean, uh, you give up a, a rook and pawn for two pieces, you, you stand much better. The, the logic is that you have an extra piece, and the winning strategy essentially boils down to you use your extra piece to win a pawn, and then win another pawn, so you can create a pass pawn, then start advancing your pass pawn uh, up the board, and eventually the defender will have to give up something to stop it from becoming a queen. And, uh, and, and then you, you now, now convert your advantage ahead of piece or ahead of exchange, depending on, on exactly what happened. Now, in this case, there's a difference. Uh, you know, Black's got a lot of pawns for, in compensation, but right for the moment, they're not doing anything. And for, for White to win with the strategy I explained, uh, he's got to get a pass pawn over on this side of the board, because that's the only place where White has pawns remaining. So, for, for White to play for a win here, he needs to win, you know, one of these pawns. And that's, right at the moment, it's not clear how he's going to do that. Uh, but again, he does have an extra piece. Um, you know, this Bishop and Rook are out of play. They need to get in the game. And... Uh, we also have to keep this king safe, although Black has traded off two of his uh, minor pieces uh, to get those pawns and and the rook. Uh, you know, Black doesn't have a whole lot of options to uh, uh, continue his attack because, you know, he's traded off two pieces. Now there's a potential queen check here and maybe swing the queen over this way. Uh, Black instead puts his rook into play. Okay, let's see how it comes out. Now here, uh, he's trying to free this bishop, so the rook will be free. Okay, uh, does expose this diagonal, but I don't see exactly how uh, Black takes advantage of that. Can't get the queen to this square. Let's see what Black does. He just parks his king over here, get it out of the way. And say, go ahead and catch up and develop my white. I, I think I have enough here. Uh, here comes the check on that diagonal that I spoke of. Now there's another check. Maybe he's saving it. Uh, it looks like he can give up the uh, uh, 
rook here and get two pieces back for the rook. Okay, um, is that what he does? Yeah, so, so you know, white is able to get this bishop developed on protected d2. So now any chance for uh, uh, for black to, or for white to try to use his extra piece is not, is gone. Now black and white can get a pawn back, it looks like. Uh, oh, this king is still exposed. Bishop takes f6. And followed by queen takes f6. Uh, but of course, white, uh, black can stop that. And here's how he does it. He just gets a check here. Now he's got an extra protector on uh, f6. And even though if black takes here, even though white can double his pawns, black is going to simply be winning this ending if the queen has come off, and that's what happens. And now he says, I don't need that pawn, I'm just going to get my rook, make my rook a strong piece. And now he eliminates any back rank mate possibilities. White needs to get this rook active, but how can he without using another pawn? Okay, I don't quite understand a5. Um, you know, you know, Black's not going to win on the queen side, but this is going to win on the king side. Should be advancing his pawns. Okay. Attacks another pawn, blocks it. Okay, okay. Now, now maybe this pawn stuff, pawn moves, makes some sense. Because it looks like uh, White's going to lose another pawn. And he trades off that pawn to win this pawn and get a new pass pawn. So it is pawn, pawn moves have worked out, but, you know, White's just in trouble here. Now, now it looks like. Uh, Rook b8 check, rook for c8 check looks pretty strong. Uh, forces the rooks, the rooks off, he has to go there. And now this bishop is just going to be helpless uh, to defend defend things. Uh, it, does white have drawing chances here? Well, yes and no. Uh, yes, because white black's running out of pawns. Okay, but he's got to get rid of these pawns. And, you know, the king needs three moves just to attack this. A fourth move to take it, and then get back over to stop this. Uh, you know, meanwhile, the a5 pawn is weak. And, you know, if, you, if he attacks with his bishop at some point, it might just walk right into the range of the uh, black king, and suddenly white's going to lose all his pawns. So, that looks like it's what's going to happen. Yep. And, uh, you know, here's black king approaching that pawn to get it off. And he does get it off the board. No, he doesn't take. He won't. He figures he need the a pawn on, and he just take the c5 pawn. And yeah, this should. This is winning for black. Uh, yeah, he's gonna get another pawn off the board, but it, it's still winning. It's still winning for black. Uh, even if it's opposite color bishops, this is close to a win for black because the uh, should be a win for black because the pawns are separated. If they're one file apart, I think it's a draw. For two files or more, it, it can win. But you have to you have to play carefully. And black has good king position, uh, and white's kind of helpless just to watch those guys go up the board. And here they go. Uh, now the one drawback in white's play is he's put everything on white square, so uh, black can try to keep this king out. You know, but you know this this bishop is left to duel with this pawn, so it, I think it's 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 more or less hopeless. Okay, so he's keeping a, pawn, uh, a pin on this pawn so it can't advance. But now it can advance because uh, if, if white trades bishops, the pawn will promote. He obviously sees that, and here goes the pawn, this is becoming too dangerous. Now maybe white has some hopes of uh, tricking uh, black. Well, actually, no, let's see, how could he do that? But, well, king, king here, you're hoping for this, and you pick up the queen, with the check, but then you know, the black king's coming up here and this promotes, so you got to check now. Uh, he doesn't. Now, why doesn't he make a queen now? Oh, it's with check. I mean, what's wrong with making a queen with check? <laughs> anyway, he doesn't. Uh, but, you know, he's still winning this, and he'll just drive the king out, and, you know, White was clearly outclassed on this one. Well, good game for uh, CK 1886. Thanks for watching. We'll be more as soon as I can get to him. Take care. Thanks.